Welcome to this week's episode of Campbell and Jones Meet the Monsters, a podcast where we chart the cinematic legacy of the classic monsters. I'm John Campbell. With me as always, Brendan Jones. John Campbell and our listeners. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Was that to me or to the listeners? Because we're going to... Yeah, I-, I was waiting for the listeners to answer, but but it was only silence. It was only the wind. I know. And my thoughts. They're so rude. They always snub us like that. They really do. It's hard. Not they're to hard to read. Person. They are. Hard it's to tough. read that audience. Um, I, I hope you're doing well. I, I can only say that for myself, um, you know, life continues on in its weary way. But then I get to watch something like Blackenstein. And it's it's like I see the sun through the clouds. <laughs> this, sort of. Brent, this is the worst movie we've ever watched. Like, really? It... it it is objectively like the worst made film I think we've watched. The thing that I I will say that I admire about <laughs> Blackenstein right off the bat. There's not much to admire, but okay. Is is uh there's a commitment to incompetence I have not seen. No, it it really is. I I've never seen a movie so like blissfully fail at every level of filmmaking. You're you're because you're a comics nerd like myself. Sure. You're familiar with the comic uh, Axe Cop, of course. Axe Cop, for those who aren't familiar, uh, is drawn by a, a guy in his twenties or early thirties, but it's written by his nine-year-old brother. Mm-hmm. Um, so like a big age gap, and written is just basically the nine-year-old making stuff up. It's the so tone great. of of the storytelling of a seven or nine-year-old. That reminded me of this, where it's like completely earnestly, yeah, deadpanly, the stupidest story construction, <laughs> terrible dialogue. There is I nothing mean, competent story, in this film. What story construction? I don't follow anything from scene to scene. Like, like what leads any character to make any decision they make in this movie? You can't track it. It's well, not even, also say it's not that even something following I admire the about this Frankenstein is, beats. <laughs> yeah, this is um, this is also one thing I think uh, I used to hear about Richard Donner when he made Superman the movie is he had the sign up above his desk that said verisimilitude. Right. Um, and you know because he wanted that to be the catchphrase. Right. For Blackenstein, I can only assume that sign said subtlety, <laughs> because this film. The subtlety of of emotional beats, of of story points, uh, of acting, I was really I admired it because the score itself is a masterpiece of subtlety. Um, this is all incredibly facetious. There is nothing good in this film. No, the, the thing no, that I, mean, I there <clears throat> is, and I think this is a, this is why I bring this up. I think this is a first for us. There's not a good performance. There's not nope. a good shot. There's not nope. a good story turn. Nope. There's not an interesting set piece. Nope. There's not a good score. There, nope. Really, like I said, it fails at every level of movie making. It's insane. We, and it's so odd that we would have this gift, as I see it, um, <laughs> after, I mean, just a, just a few movies away from what we had previously decided was the worst thing we'd ever seen. Yeah. And, uh, the Boy Who Cried Werewolf, which is still a terrible film. Yes. I, I mean, it is one of those things where it's like, this is... This is more hilarious to watch. Yes. But it is technically worse than Boy Who Cried Werewolf. Oh. But Boy Who Cried Werewolf oh. is unwatchable, really. <laughs> yeah. It is. No it's one true. should have to sit through that. Blackenstein is, and we will get into it, but it's it's certainly more, um, this is an amusing watch. This yeah. is a funny watch. I laughed all the way through it and just stared at the screen just going, I can't, can't believe what I just saw. <laughs> Um, so it's it's bad good it's good bad as yeah. opposed to boy who cried werewolf which is just interminable yeah but I mean um, you and I were saying before we started recording that how has this never been on Mystery Science Theater three thousand because it, it 100% just doesn't make any sense tailor made for whoever in the robots you know yep yeah whoever in the robots yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it but it is true this is um. This is mind-bogglingly almost like it, it, 
could almost feel like one of those intentionally bad films, it, 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 except for you can see the earnestness behind every single person and, in it. And and I've talked about this before with bad movies on other podcasts, things like that. Those are the best bad movies because when people are trying to make a bad thing, like a Sharknado, I'm like, oh, yeah. fucking who can Velocipaster? Yeah. That's not funny. No, because be it is. It's that knowing thing, and that makes... Well, there's a joy of discovery in watching a truly bad, unintentionally bad film because <clears throat> I'm, I would never mock these people for making Blackenstein because I respect anyone that goes out and does it. Sure. And they tried, and they got money from relatives, no doubt. They, I mean, whatever. They the, they the guy, mortgaged the their homes made, to make this thing. The guy who directed this movie it's... made nine more movies after that, after this. How is that possible? I don't understand either. I mean, he made such classics as The Happy Hooker Goes to Washington. Oh, that's a good one. Wham, bam, thank you, Spaceman. <laughs> Skate Town USA. Come on, a classic. Is this William Levy? This is William A. Levy, yes. Wow. This is his directorial debut. What, what about debut. the writer? Frank R. Salteri. Did he, what Frank else did he do? R. Or Saletri. Saletri. This is it, man. One and done. One and done. He was it, man. <clears throat> man. He, 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 um, he did it one time. Uh, it may have had something to do with the fact that he was shot dead in 1982. Uh, and to this wow. day, that murder is still unsolved. So wow. We are taking tips if anybody has any uh, potential clues about who killed Frank R. Uh, Celetri, who I that, that'd say, be so weird if this became a true crime podcast of, <laughs> of us suddenly becoming amateur detectives like after solve this prank into this thing, murder. We hear about a murder and then the podcast just veers into becoming that. Who did we that? never thought when we were watching Blackenstein that we would become so involved in the life story? I do have or the death story. I do have one idea about possibly what led to his death, which is. Uh, this was his only he was trying to get into show business but his job outside of this was he was a criminal defense attorney i'm gonna go oh. ahead and guess that had something to do with that and oh. here's my favorite piece of information joe DeSue, who plays eddie the creature in this yep. movie is one yep. of his former clients wow and his this is his only screen appearance well what's so weird is that you say that and in my mind all i could think is they must have scoured the acting schools of L.A. Uh, it, it, they found a rare talent. You telling me that this person had no prior experience no is like a bombshell in and my also, head. And also, I mean, that's one thing. But that nobody wanted to hire this guy after the What? I mean, what? come on. <laughs> there a is star is made, my friends. Not born. <laughs> a star is made. Yes. Oh, my God. It is... One of the worst performances I've ever seen on film in a movie that has maybe five of the worst performances I've ever seen. They're uh, all bad. And literally and, uh, everyone, will... every single actor is bad in this movie. The it's best so... actor in this film, or at least the most believable delivery, is from a uh, uh, a very buxom stripper looking woman uh, in a transparent negligee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, she gives, I think, the best you know readings of her lines about she does god damn it the dog doesn't bark when it's uh, there's something going on out there and i believed her mm -hmm. the guy she's with didn't buy him no didn't buy him at all but she really brought the reality again for the 30 seconds of screen time she has in this this what, movie 86 this. minute movie <laughs> can we talk about and we will but um two of the main characters are both uh, largely built, soft-featured African American gentlemen, um, who both have monotone deliveries. Their their deliveries, both the creature and the assistant who who causes the creature, are both. And I think he's dubbed, by the way. Um, if not, he, all of his lines are eighty yard. But their performances he are totally dead-eyed and monotone. Mal Ro Roosevelt Jackson, who plays Malcolm. And that's mm -hmm. Malcolm, not Malcolm. It's like right. Mal Honeycomb. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, makes one later. This is 1973. In 1992, he stars in the film China Heat. Oh, that one. That's good. No. Uh, <laughs> never in which he it. plays chief of detectives. A special unit of women fights drug smugglers from Asia to New York is the plot of that movie. 
Well, he's just as uh, bland and and monotone as our our lead creature, um, but he gets lots of close ups <laughs> of him staring at the lead actress. Oh my god, oh. this movie's terrible. Oh, oh, and like I said, it's not even really the Frankenstein story. No, not hardly at all. I really like the very effective use of Echo, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. <laughs> Um, that just reminded me of something from later in the film. First, I know what you want to do. You want to talk about this poster? I think, weirdly, we need to. For all mankind, we need to put this down on digital tape. Yeah, because th this is one of the more interesting posters we've had. Um, the primary focus of the poster is this middle section, fo just a photograph. Just a photo. Of a woman. Yeah, I don't think it's our lead actress. I don't think this woman's in the movie. No. Um, it, it, with, with an afro and yep. just a, a an unbuttoned blouse and nothing on underneath. Yeah. Screaming at the camera with her arms she's out. She's just, yeah, she's just doing a, actually a kind of a classic universal horror scream. Yeah. Uh, only showing a lot more boob than any of the universal actresses ever did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. And she's just screaming. We don't even know what she's screaming at. We don't even see, like, a suggestive shadow <laughs> no, on the wall what of I the love creature. Is, yeah, they don't even indicate the Frankenstein monster of the title. Nope. They're like, whatever, so, man. So, color photo in the middle of a white poster and the, uh, the text at the top. Give it to us. Not since Frankenstein stalked the earth has the world known so terrifying a day, dot, 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 or night. Yeah. I don't even know I, what the fuck that means. <laughs> No, that means nothing. Plus, I love the fact that Frankenstein is in quotes. <laughs> yeah. Not since Frankenstein, if... the novel, stalked the earth. Oh, I was going to say, I like the idea of not since Frankenstein, if that's his real name. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever not that since... That's what he told us he was called. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, has the world known so terrifying a day or night? What does that matter? What? It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It does, and it makes no sense. None of this makes any sense. And then it says in bloody red font, Black Frankenstein. Yeah. And then underneath it in tiny, just very normal black font, Blackenstein. <laughs> this movie can't make we, up its mind what it's called. No, we can't. But I, I need to uh, also talk about yep. a disclaimer that, that's very important. I was hoping you would. We get Black Frankenstein in bloody letters. Mm hmm and then Blackenstein underneath it. Yeah. Then there is there is a disclaimer, which is very important. <laughs> very important. Warning to people with weak hearts, mm -hmm. dot, 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 no doctors or nurses in attendance. You know how there normally <laughs> are at movie screenings? There won't be in this one. Which, I mean, I do appreciate the warning, but I also think it's kind of, uh, kind of cocky to say that they will never come to this movie yeah. you'll never see a doctor or nurse anywhere near not this film once no they would never it's not uh, even as visitors even as uh, viewers they're not gonna no honey what should we they see tonight doing... how about blackenstein i'm a doctor what are you crazy i'm not gonna see that <laughs> oh by the way shocker um it turns out that the the near nude woman on the poster is in the film mm. she is just a minor character uh, Marva Farmer, who actually on the poster says, and introducing Marva Farmer, yeah. what I find funny about this... I don't this remember her in the movie. ...is Marva Farmer, who is the oh, near nude minute. woman. Now that I see who she is, I do remember her in this movie. Right, but couple in alley. <laughs> she is the female in the couple in the alley. She but, has no dialogue in the film, but does get her shirt ripped open, as does pretty much every female in the film. There is nonstop shirt ripping in this picture. But we do get a final girl in this movie that also has no dialogue that makes no sense why she's oh, in it. Uh, oh, who keeps her talking? Oh, that girl. When I was just like, wait a minute, We're that's who there. he is. Oh, not, I know. for the love of God. She's a final girl. And uh, what the fuck was that about? But we're not there yet. You're talking about couple and car. <laughs> I'm talking about, uh, no, no, no. She is. Um, uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Um, that's not. She's She is in a car. But she's she's, not... she's a, in a, um, a dune buggy, and right. she's not listed here on the IMDb. But in the credits, <gasps> which I did not. watch, 
Uh, she is listed as uh, oh, girl a dune, dune buggy. buggy girl. If you expand out buggy. to the full cast, there she is listed as Dale oh, Bach. There we go. And yeah. I, I, this could come as a shock, Brandon, her only screen appearance. What this? There's a lot of mo- there's a lot of actors in this who this is it for them. This is the one and done. Well, you know that their families love this. You know that like once a year at Thanksgiving they're like, "We're going to watch Blackenstein." <laughs> no, please don't. Oh, we got to see Grandma in Blackenstein. Uh, can I say the person who had the most uh seemingly successful career in this thing? Who was that? That shitty awful orderly. He's in a ton of stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a yeah, bunch I, of stuff. <laughs> and like yeah, legitimate was... stuff. One of the most ridiculous caricatures. Oh, oh, god! So before we get to the plot, I do want to. There is one tagline that isn't on this poster we looked at that I love. Give it to us because I don't. Once again, don't think it fits this movie. To stop this mother takes one bad brother. That, what? It doesn't. That, that sounds it, like a Shaft that, movie. Yeah. Who the? What this, is it? Who this are they movie talking doesn't. About? This movie doesn't lean into the black exploitation thing as much as Blackula oh, did. Here, here's the thing: but if, if any reservations or problems anyone might have with a Blackula movie, the goddamn masterpieces, both of them compared to this thing. Oh yes, I mean, holy hell! <laughs> those, that's the Citizen Kane of black exploitation horror movies. Those films at this point, Jesus. Other than an extended scene in a nightclub, uh, extended. Mm-hmm. Uh, scene in the nightclub that we get late in the film. There's really no like no. dive into urban culture of the time. No. But that scene does crack me up. It does, uh, yeah, because uh, it has twin pimps uh, in the audience. I, I, I love I, the twin pimps. Yes, I will say I am a little disappointed that because we don't do Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, we'll never get to Doctor Black and Mister Hyde. Yeah, um, because that I would like to see. Also, that's Bernie Casey, who I love. Uh, Bernie Casey, great. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's dive into this movie. And yeah. uh, things are starting funky because we open this thing up in the lab with very trippy electricity effects. And get used to those because sparks and electricity make up like 70% of this movie. This is what I love about uh, this this uh, particular lab set. Um, so let's say you're the production designer on Blackenstein. And let's say that you know someone who works at Paramount, just mm-hmm. like a friend of a friend. Yeah. And they're like going, you know what? On the weekend, I'll let you in. You can take a look around the props room. We'll let you rent some of the stuff, but, you know, let's keep it on the hush-hush. So set decorator goes in to Paramount and goes, I'll take all of it. <laughs> this lab is, it's got Brandon, Tesla that, coils. That story it, is true. <laughs> I don't know. Did you look in the trivia? No, that was me totally riffing. That Why? story is true, only that friend wasn't at Paramount. That friend was at Universal, and these props are from James Whale's Frankenstein. Jesus Christ. Well, some of it. Mm-hmm. Because also, it looks like they pulled stuff in from one of the recording studios at Abbey Road. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, I mean, yes, it of- uses items from, but some of this did come from the Universal Archives from the well, I said Paramount point. because some of the consoles look like they were ripped off the uh, Enterprise set. And <laughs> that may be too. This guy may have known a few people at a few studios. The the sound effects clearly are tricorder sound effects. Mm. But I will say, by the time this movie was my made, ear, the Star my, Trek my ear is sound attuned. Effect, yeah, <laughs> yes, the Star Trek sound effect record, the LP, had come out by this point. They literally just pulled this off a of Star Trek sound effects yeah. record. Oh, a hundred percent! Wow. I I know a Trek sound effect, uh, you know, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that I would if, on a trivia show. If you want to play those for me, perfect score. I I'm telling you, I'm sure you would. Yeah. Uh, I would do pretty well. But uh, yeah, so I, this I, I is a I round. I could have used one woo in here. That would have been great. <laughs> Th- this round lab is not. It's not in a castle kind of structure. So it looks like you're in a very sterile, well, theater set, mm-hmm. uh, but round. And then all this junk in there. Um, which doesn't things hasn't been set up to make sense. Lots of lights flashing. Yeah. Lots of all that kind of stuff. And we get titles over this. And our title, yeah. yes, is Blackenstein, the Black Frankenstein. Well, mine started, I don't know if I saw a different one. Uh, mine actually started on a shot of the outside of the house yes. slash lab. Yes. 
That's where it said spooky mist, and yeah. then suddenly this wobbly green animated thing comes uh, yeah, up, and you're like, uh, "Oh, will that be way. the title?" Yeah. And then yes, then it solidifies into Blackenstein, the Black Frankenstein. I watched this on YouTube once again. No Elvira introduction of this thing. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, that, they could, and it really would. You could have used it. I think if this thing really Elvira would have fit pretty well with this. She would have um, massacred it. Mm-hmm. But what else could you do? That woman is savage. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so then we cut to a plane landing and get a nice uh, establishing shot of the sign for the Burbank Airport. To let, we're yep. no- let us know that we're staying in sunny Burbank, California. I love <laughs> how long all of this is like, we really want to root you in the, in the present day. So we see a lot of the plane landing. We get to see them disembark. We get to see our lead character, uh, I, I think Doctor. I think a lot what's her of, name again? Uh, it's Winifred. Winifred Walker. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, a, so it's we a Marvel see her Comics get name. her rental car from Hertz. I think a lot of this <laughs> is we got to get to feature length running time here. Yep, yep. <laughs> this thing clocks in at a at a healthy eighty six minutes, uh, which uh, there's a, there's a fair amount of credits at the start and a fair amount of credits at the end. So we're looking at probably yep. eighty minutes of actual screen time here. So if you were worried that you wouldn't see her drive along the freeways only to get up to, I assume, the hilltop sort of Burbank-ish, well, that is very Burbank. When in um, Burbank, California. Mansion yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, of Dr. Stein. I just wanted You're a, not waiting. I just wanted a game show announcer being like, guests of Blackenstein stay at the beautiful Marriott in Burbank, <laughs> California. <laughs> Where the stars come out to play. So, so she goes to oh very clever screenplay. She goes to Doctor Stein's. Oh like, oh like Frankenstein. Only they did a flippity flip. Yeah. They they chopped off. Can part I say of it. my I immediate disappointment that the main character of this movie is not named Doctor Blackenstein? I was really I was hoping kind he of be... hoping that his name would be Frank, and then a middle initial N. Oh, that and the would last have been name good. Stein. That would have been that they could have still done and saved it. We never do get. a They first could have name still it. done, but they didn't. We only ever hear of him listed as Doctor Stein. There's never a first name bandied about. And of course, and he's an old white guy. Oh yeah. But Winifred is a, a very cute uh, black lady, and she's a former student of his. Yeah. She's come to see him at his oh castle like mansion. And you know this because she says everything Brendan just said immediately upon walking in the door. <laughs> Hello. Well, what I'm happens is when she <laughs> rings the the doorbell, yeah. and what you immediately think is, "Oh, this guy's going to become the creature." Because I don't know, because this very tall, broad-shouldered, big guy, mm-hmm. and he shows up going, "What do you want?" <laughs> and he talks like Lurch. I, and uh, I'll she's say like, this. Um, I'll say this. I thought he already was a creature of some sort with this performance. I thought I we were going to find so out he would already been experimenting on this guy somehow. Even up until we actually get what become how we get to Blackenstein, I kept thinking, well, he'll still end up loaning limbs or a brain because I these two guys are so similar that I can see there'll be some crossover. No, <laughs> no, and they, no. they I would say they're on equal footing as actors as well. Uh... Oh yeah, no, they are indistinguishable uh, deadpan monotone <laughs> guys, <laughs> except for this guy is talking with some. Very strange intonations. And he is Malcolm, mm-hmm. and he is the assistant to Dr. Stein. Yeah. And she's like, um, can I come in, please? And he's like, yeah. what do you want? She's like, I know Dr. Stein. Tell him that it's Winifred Walker. And he's like, hold on. Yeah. And then we have to see him go over to a phone, go, yes, <laughs> yes. hello, Dr. Stein. There's a Winifred Walker. Okay. He's like, oh, He'll send you. Yeah. Send her up. Yeah. And so she does, and he says, "Oh, so good to see you again, my beloved student." Uh, well, I and she says, "I was hoping you could help me because my fiance has been wounded by a landmine in Vietnam." And he's like, "Well, that's you've come to the right place because I'm an expert in limb replacement." Yep, exactly. Um, but I, I love the way it, there's also exposition laden into the dialogue that's supposed to be kind of natural information given but it doesn't work that way it's all like i haven't seen you since you finished your phd and blah 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 oh yeah and she's like and i haven't seen you since you won the nobel or whatever the fuck oh this is my favorite thing he did win the nobel but later they'll talk about it more which i found incredible anyway yeah he apparently he's won the nobel for 
cracking the DNA sequence? Well, if you thought you would hear not hear the word DNA enough in this film, uh, this is a one-stop shop. It you is. will hear the word DNA 58,000 hey, times in this hey, film. Hey, fans of RNA, that's mentioned plenty just as well, so don't worry. I'm glad you pointed DNA that out, John, because I didn't RNA want them to feel excluded. Are tossed about. I mean, this is something I thought about watching it, too. I'm saying I don't expect any kind of very realistic science from a Frankenstein movie. But, but this, this is thing, nine nine year old. This version thing of... is tr- it has, this movie has no idea what DNA and RNA are at well, all. They don't. But at least grab this that guy vial has cracked of, to the DNA code. Grab that vial of a... DNA to inject it. What? <laughs> we have syringes full of DNA. There's bottles of DNA. There's syringes of DNA. We're they all with... look like Kool-Aid, but we're yeah. not there yet. Yeah. Various flavors, which I think is nice. It looked delicious. Uh, it, <laughs> it looked it quite refreshing. Squirt some of that in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> don't take that line out of context. Sorry, man. That's already a ringtone somewhere. <laughs> uh, we've given him a few. Uh, we have. So, so anyway, uh, yeah, he says... Uh, so, <laughs> so then they. Uh, she says, well, he's being transferred to a... Fl- hospital in los angeles here uh and he'll be here tomorrow or whatever so they have to have dinner now them having dinner at this long table that is just in like a black box theater with curtains yes. all around them i yes. this really got me uh because the way the camera does this like 360 shot around the table and you know <laughs> and it's just it's just darkness all around them it's only yep. this table and you're just like my god uh, and Malcolm serves them. Yeah, uh, what is he? He's his lab assistant and his butler? Seemingly. Yeah. That he's also sort of his major domo. <laughs> but this he's is singing to all his needs. This, so, um, so I'm going like, okay, so this guy's supposed to be the, like, Igor of this movie? Because at this sure. point, at this point in the movie, I'm still trying to make this jibe with traditional Frankenstein story. Right, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to piece together who's playing what role essentially Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm saying i think this is interesting because it seems like she's the female lead but this frankenstein is older so it's not a fiance it's okay but her fiance is the okay i give up on this later when i realize they're not in any way following the story of frankenstein no just don't worry about it if one thing this ain't your daddy's frankenstein no no uh and so uh she let's see she's going to work with Dr. Stein, because he can, he says he might be able to help Eddie, but I make no promises. By the way, this is John Hart as Dr. Stein. Yeah. Um, a guy who's in stuff. He leaves no impression and uh, doesn't really do a very good job. No, uh, he did do... He's not, he's not terrible, but uh, he is a community theater actor. The end. <laughs> uh, he was in a <laughs> bunch of stuff. A, a huge long career before this, actually, starting in 1937 wow. in a bunch of movies. I mean, it seems like small parts and stuff, but he definitely got 54 episodes of... What? Would, what? He was the fucking Lone Ranger. What? When was he the Lone Ranger? It, on radio, maybe? Let's see here. Clayton Moore is the Lone Ranger from 1949 to 57, from 1953 to ni- 1950, 1953. This guy was the Lone Ranger? Hang on. What? I don't know. So Clayton Moore is listed as doing 169 episodes as the Lone Ranger. But then there's right, now, 54 now episodes of John Hart listed as the Lone Ranger in that show. Was there a period of time when Clayton Moore wasn't the... That doesn't make uh- any sense to me. Oh, I here mean, it is. Here it is. I ha- I found the info. Clayton Moore sat out 52 episodes. The studio claimed it was his pay dispute, but Moore insisted up until his death that it was over creative differences. John Hart was hired to replace him, but the change did not so sit well with audiences. Well, there's uh, there's the photographic proof. I'm looking at him. Oh, my God. They also changed his mask. For one thing, Clayton Moore got the better mask anyway. This is a Oh, my God, mask. you're right. Oh, jeez. Oh, this guy, I mean, this guy must have been terrible as the Lone Ranger. Yeah, an extremely stiff Lone Ranger. He has to have been. Oh, my God. Is this him with, oh, man, him and Lon Chaney Jr. and Hawkeye and the Last of the Mohicans in 1957. 
<laughs> wow. Oh my god, it was a show. Thirty nine episodes. Woo! Boy, <laughs> it all folds over, doesn't it? Oh man. Oh man. That was a that was a Mohican who it, liked Who knew liked that someday hooch. he would play Dr. Stein? This guy's career is fascinating, and now I need to see some of the show with Lon Chaney Jr. in Last of the Mohicans, because that must be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy seems like a guy who was just sort of on the periphery of Hollywood for decades. Yeah, a working actor. I mean, uh, certainly there are people who never got that far, so I'll give him yeah, total props. Yeah, and he props. continued working past this. He did uh, several episodes of Dallas, and he's in A Greatest American Hero. Uh, oh, my God. And his last... Screen appearance is playing the Lone Ranger in an episode of Happy Days. Yes, and I remember oh, that one. And I see he has an appearance in The Legend of the Lone Ranger, that movie. Oh, how good. Mm-hmm. He's, and by that, I mean it's also bad. But, oh, it's a but terrible I movie. Um, yeah. I, even as a kid, I remember seeing it being like, something's wrong here. The man with the mask. Don't forget there's a, a song that well, keeps you had to up in the it. 80s. You had to. Oh, God. Um, man. I remember, uh, we yeah. got to get back to him creating Blackenstein, though, yeah, my friend. Yeah, so the next day they go to the hospital, uh, and we find that Eddie has lost his arm and legs. His, both his well, arms and his legs from a landmine. This is the, How'd that this landmine is the thing that, hit him? I was trying to figure that out. <laughs> the thing that, that killed me is... We get uh, a few times in this movie, we get ADR that was clearly dropped in later because they're like, oh, we never explained this or they had to cut a scene. So we see them, Dr. Stein and Winifred, walking into the hospital and we hear this ADR dialogue yeah. where you hear Dr. Stein go, you actually never told me what, what Eddie's problem was. Which I love like the he's idea already getting to the hospital and then being like, oh, yes. what? we never actually discussed what's going on. What? And then she says, well, he's he stepped on a landmine, and um, he lost both arms and both legs. And I kept thinking while I was watching, I was like, going, you could have just said, he's a quadriplegic. <laughs> I was like, I'm so, like I said, I'm he so lost both out. arms, both legs, all of his toes, all of his fingers, his fingernails. I'm trying to figure out the way a landmine <laughs> explodes, though. It took out both his legs, didn't affect his head or chest, and no. then took off both arms. Well, the Viet Cong... They had some very wicked I uh, guess landmines so. that could target limbs. No, here's what happened. He stepped on the first. He stepped on a landmine, blew his legs off, which sent the the yeah. top half of him forward. His arms outstretched and happened had to, to land to on yet the... another landmine, which then blew <laughs> off the arms. And then the camera zooms in on his face, and he goes, "Darn the luck! It's a living. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> it's a living." <laughs> Oh, Jesus. He was always uh, sort of a Eddie. Flintstones animal of a soldier. Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> poor Eddie poor indeed, Eddie. because when we see Eddie, yeah, he is just a uh, head and torso in a bed, and he's, please, may I have some ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> I stopped the movie at that point, and I laughed for 18 minutes. And then I rewound, I watched it again, and I laughed for 14 minutes. I kept doing it till I got the laughter down to about one minute, and then I could keep going on Please, the movie. may I have Holy some ice shit. cream? This is how we're introduced to this character. <laughs> it's not just the voice, and what John's doing is very accurate. You have to picture, this guy's very beefy. He doesn't, I, I, I mean, not mean to be mean, he does not look like someone who had served in Vietnam. Yeah, I think, but I think beefy is clear. He's not like... You know, it's not a morbidly he's not obese. Fat. No, he is beefy. Yeah. He's, right. Yeah. He's, but he's also so there's ex he's expressionless. So he's just looking up from his pillow and just goes, "May I have some ice cream?" Please, may I have some ice cream? <laughs> and then, oh, uh, what's hilarious? The, the best character up, in this movie. Yes. Right. Answering that question is the orderly, and yeah. the orderly goes off on a rant. That Holy you just don't even shit. imagine. It comes out of nowhere. This guy. He goes, ice cream? Why do you think you deserve ice cream? Deserve. 
Yeah. Like deserve is and, and, and he's, he's like, like he's like uh my throat is dry please, and I need my throat some, is so dry and it needs ice cream in he's it. He's like you're too good for water? He goes, "Why don't you help yourself to a glass of water knowing he can't cuz he doesn't have <laughs> arms or legs?" Oh god, this Nobody guy. and then this whole thing about you didn't have to go over there, which I thought was weird because the Vietnam War of course famously had a draft. So I thought some people volunteered. Some but people I mean, did volunteer, is, but I I think it was an odd choice that he's like, you didn't have to go over there. Does he know well, this it's guy also volunteered? An odd choice that this orderly that has nothing to do with the film gets an eighteen minute dialogue where he is well, this borderline. Is... He's not even borderline. He's over the borderline <laughs> racist, and also just oh, he's just, just awful. He's just across the board horrible in every he's way. Just, it's a white guy, of course. Yeah. Uh, and he never does say any of the horrible terms you're imagining. No, I was waiting for it, weren't you? I was waiting for something. I thought he was going a to. Slur. And I, was, I wasn't sure if he was going to go all the way, but I thought he was going to go. Again, John, this film prides itself on its subtlety. So he does not this, do that. But no, guy, but he goes though, on about like I went down there, I was gonna fight, you know, but they said they turned me away for I wasn't physically fit enough. And he goes, Hey man, um and then this guy yeah, says I have a bum ticker or something, I. but what the hell? Yeah, somehow this guy got in though. He was physically fit enough. Uh <laughs> and he, he goes, sent my yeah, fat ass. I'm no over coward, there. all right. I'm no coward. Yeah, which meanwhile I, this guy is laying there with himself. just on the pillow going, I just wanted some fucking ice cream. Really like, seriously. He's also I'm no coward. Who said you what is it? Where did this come from? This guy made a it, mistake asking anything. I feel like no matter what Eddie had asked this guy, he would have gotten this monologue from him. Exactly. Like this, this, he would have gotten this, this monologue. Was in the chamber. Because essentially, this orderly is working on his one-man show. <laughs> and uh, it uh, at the end of the speech, he does go, and scene, which I thought was great. This, that at least let us know this was all something so he prepared. Th this guy, <laughs> the next year, this guy is in Young Frankenstein. Oh, get out. Mm -hmm. What what is he what does he, he play? play? He plays an orderly. Jesus Christ! He plays an orderly in Frankenstein's class. It says so. He doesn't have a big part by any means, but still, interesting. Frankenstein and Young Frankenstein. This guy, on though, one person's has resume. A hundred and eighty-three acting credits. Well, I'm not saying he was. Well, no, he is bad, but he, he's at least. He's acting, but, which is more than the guy on the pillow asking for ice cream. Yeah, a, um, a lot of his parts, though, are like police officer, yeah. military man, man yeah. on bus, like a lot of that yeah. kind of stuff. But still, a ton of them. Unbelievable. He's also in Soylent Green, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Soylent Green is people, John. Oh, my. Okay, here's my favorite credit he has. In the movie Earthquake, also the next year, 1974, he played Brawny Foreman. Brawny Foreman. <laughs> oh, he's in an episode of Kolchak the Night Stalker. Oh, my God. In which he plays the unforgettable role of second maintenance engineer. In what episode? Oh, that that's a good question. Let's see here. That is. By the way, I got to notice that oh, my uh, box me set too. shipped. Oh, boy. So excited. He's in season. Oh, well, there's only one season. Uh, episode yeah. seven, The Devil's Platform. The Devil's Platform. All right. Yeah. That's a, yep. that's a solid one. Yeah, that's with the oil, Derek. That's the one with Tom Skerritt. Yep. A young Skerritt. Young Skerritt, uh, pre-mustache. Uh, does he not have the mustache in it? I think he may not. Ooh, let me... Not, not. <laughs> Man, uh, you're rabbit-holing bad today. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, no. Mustache confirmed. He does have the mustache. Okay. I'm looking All at right. him standing next to Kolchak, and he's in a satanic cloak with a dagger and he's got a mustache yes and oh there's... no not oil Derek. right no this was the one about the politician who sells his soul to Correct. the devil that's yeah, right that's, that's, that's that one. the yeah. devil's platform yeah that's right mm -hmm. now that that's been solved back to blackenstein uh <laughs> <laughs> our late night picture blackenstein um this is a this is a total this is not even a midnight movie it's like a 2 a.m movie um yeah uh, so anyway, after being denied ice cream and then just fucking berated by this racist scumbag, uh, eventually Stein and Winifred yeah. come to the room. And what I do like is, I mean, if nothing else, they do show that orderly do a, like a turn because these are people that he can't torment because yeah. they're, uh, uh -huh. they're able to walk. You have and limbs. 
never mind. Yeah, he just goes, visiting hours over in 20 minutes, okay? Yeah. And he gets the hell out of there. Yeah. But what I thought was hilarious was Eddie's in, in this bed. He's true. He's had a hard go of it. But there's the love of his life just walked in. Um, <laughs> this actor gives nothing. He get it. It's like, mm. will you get me the ice cream? <laughs> Please, yeah. for God's sake, will anyone get, in get me the ice cream? Man, that's even more than he's doing in the movie. <laughs> just, Please, no, he, I he need does not. The it's ice like cream. Winifred, and she's like, Eddie, this is my friend, Doctor Stein, and he's gonna help you. He's an expert. Thank God, he happens to be an expert in replacing, replacing limbs. limbs. And yeah. this is what made me laugh so hard, and I wrote this down. In fact, he recently won the Nobel Peace Prize, she says. <laughs> for what now? It's, what? <laughs> the Nobel Peace Prize for cracking the DNA chain. Oh, yeah, he has, I, I had to stop he, it and pause because I was like, I'm sorry. He he brings all nations together in uh, in the fact that he can apparently grow extra limbs. But for there these are Nobel Prizes for science. How do the writers of this movie not know that? There's a reason it's called the Nobel Peace Prize as opposed to yeah. the Nobel other kinds of prizes. The thing I love, too, is... Uh, is you know this is what we've established that dr stein does and what he's known for mm -hmm. when we finally get to see anything the man's working on or the people he's working with has nothing to do with this bullshit there is one one patient bruno who we'll get to in a bit but even that Jesus. but can we talk about the fact and we'll get to it he has done something much more revolutionary and incredible than reattach yep. limbs and something that seems like it's a setup for something, and nothing pays off. <laughs> no. Nothing pays off from that at all. It's another classic. It is the thing it does have in common with a lot of Frankenstein movies, though, in that the ancillary thing he's done is more impressive than anything else yes. <laughs> and should just be his main focus. But it's like, oh, whatever. I've also cured aging. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, he's... <laughs> exactly. Let's talk I reverse about... death. But look at this thing tap dance over here. Look at it. It's tap dancing. That is, uh, yeah. Uh, and so once again, he keep, I just love, what I do love about Dr. Stein is he goes, well, I, I might be able to help. I make no promises. He says right. like, like yeah. three to four times in this thing. He goes, well, I'll look into it, all right? But let's not get crazy. <laughs> I just don't want to get your hopes up, Eddie. I might be able to do something, but I might not. <laughs> Tell me, does this white hat and black mask look good on me? I just... I don't know. <laughs> the <What>? man <laughs> in the mask. What's this? Clayton Moore is coming in to play Dr. Stein. God damn it. Not again. <laughs> he's back. Uh, we got the Shit. contract worked out with Moore. Uh, he's coming in to play Dr. Stein now. Oh, no. <laughs> Could you imagine the disappointment on this guy when he figures that when they tell him that they've worked out the contract dispute? He's like, I don't. What? <laughs> but I, I the idea that Clayton Moore has this sort of antagonistic Salieri Mozart relationship with this guy. <laughs> I just love the idea that there was a time when he could sit and he's like, I'm not coming in. If, if, <laughs> tell him to find another Lone Ranger. And then the audience apparently was And he like, says, good luck. Yeah. And apparently another. that was right because they found this asshole and people were like, no. <laughs> and then they gave him whatever he wanted. Uh, I worry about Jay Silverheels. You just don't pull a, a, a co-star out from under somebody like that without, <laughs> you know, that that must have hurt. <laughs> yeah, man. Because he, he's in every episode of that thing. But uh, That's right. Yeah, Clayton Moore got a year off or whatever. He too. called another man Kimosabi, yeah. and I don't feel right about yeah. that. Even even he, after every take, he was like, I just feel dirty. I just I can't. Uh, That's not my Kimosabi. Taking uh, another shower. Man, he's been taking a lot of showers on <laughs> I just can't wash John Hart off of me. Uh, <laughs> That's another good ringtone. I just can't wash John Hart off of me. <laughs> Even after Clayton Moore was back, Clayton Moore was just like, I can smell him on you, Jay. I just like the non sequitur. Uh, I just can't wash John Hart off of me. Uh, Have John Hart's I costume burned. I'm not wearing that shit. Uh, Why can't I get Mary Hart on me? <laughs> hey, her legs are quite valuable. Didn't she have her legs insured for an insane amount of money? She did, yeah. Oh, hilarious. Hilarious. Eh, crazy. What a world. <laughs> um, but anyway, 
John Hart is all we need as no, far as no a, a better, Dr. Stein. No better transition than, oh, what a world. Anyway. <laughs> what a world. Anyway. <laughs> We're doing morning TV transitions. We kind of are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they, uh, let's see. He, yeah, he says. Pumpkin uh, Spice is back at Starbucks, John. Yeah. <laughs> so they have. Well, it's fall. <laughs> I love the idea of what kind of power Dr. Stein has that the VA will transfer him from the hospital yeah. to Dr. Stein's residence. They just load him in an ambulance, yeah, whatever, Eddie, and then they roll him out at the, the castle. If you want this stump of a guy, yeah, take him. <laughs> we'll pack him oh, up we, and bring well, him over. A little notice, though. A little forewarning. Guy loves ice cream. Yeah. Won't stop asking for Get it. So I hope ice you're cream. stocked up. Yeah, make sure you're stocked. He'll eat you out of house and home with that stuff. <laughs> Uh, he's always, can I have some ice cream? I wish he, I wish that's all he said in the movie. I really do wish that was his one pure focus on the film. Is he's I like, was hoping I there would be some, some sort of like, uh, uh, drop in when he is the creature. Cause the creature only growls. Oh, but what? if the one thing the creature says at the end of the movie, when he's dying is, could I please have some ice cream? I was cream? also thinking when he's on one of his rampages, we see him go into an ice cream shop. Everybody runs out. Holy and fuck. he just gets into the freezer and he's like, oh, rom, 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 rom. John, I know that we talk about remaking a lot of these films, but I think you're on to something. I, I, think, I think this think is we, the one. We have to remake this movie just to include that scene. <laughs> It's it's a huge missed opportunity. I actually do it's think huge. it's a missed opportunity. Although it is one of about 18 things that they set up and never pick up in this movie. Yeah, there no, is that's, no, that's uh, there is almost, the name of the game here. I don't think there are any payoffs in this movie. Almost anything. No. <laughs> it's all, like Because as we're saying, there are about five or six things in these next couple scenes where you're like, there you go. Do something with that. Nope. Well, you keep expecting, like, um, as we mentioned, we keep expecting the other two patients for their storylines to pay off. Oh, my God. Even in a small way, the, they don't. No, not at all. Quite Because they, they arrive here, and this is where Dr. Stein is uh, showing Winifred what he's been doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the first thing we see is, yes, you see this woman? She's actually 92 years old. What? Yeah, I have come up with a way, thanks to my DNA shot, ever or since, whatever the fuck he calls it. Ever since he cracked the DNA sequence. Hmm? He's cracked it, and that allows him to somehow reverse aging. Mm -hmm. He goes, the only problem is, she has to get a new injection every 12 hours. Right, or else. And if she doesn't, just... she's just going to start aging rapidly well, and Well, yeah, because that's what he says. It's like, she'll get back to being 92. She'll go back to her old age and then keep going. Yeah. So and, uh, she's going to end up like Walter Donovan at the end like, of uh, Last Crusade and just like, ah. Oh. I think so. But I love the way that she's see all that? just sitting up in bed. Plus, I love this, that Dr. Stein's practice, whatever, I mean, it's not a, it's not a lab. It's his home, which is this mm -hmm. big castle-like mansion. So his patients are just in these, like, luxurious rooms. You're oh, like, yeah. what the fuck is this? It's so this nice. lady's just sitting up in bed, hearing this guy say, yeah, if I don't give her a shot every 12 hours, she's just going to turn into dust. And she's just smiling pleasantly, like, ah, oh, the doctor is a wonderful man, isn't he? Oh, he's so, a wonderful he's man. He's so great. I guess if you're 92, you figure you might not have long anyway, so let's take a shot here. Let's take a chance. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Whatever. But Maybe yes, this goes like wrong, you said, but yeah. this is the this is, amazing thing he has done. <laughs> this is... Like the biggest game changer in the history of medicine, maybe. Yep. <laughs> and also, I gotta say that uh, Winifred handles it pretty well. I mean, because she does. She's like, oh, that's fascinating. But also, I, the other thing I started to go off in terms of, I'm not even a scientist, and I'm going, well, I wonder if you could do this in some sort of microwave and like shrink tumors with it, or you know, like what what's the you know, there's any number of ways this could be used other than just de aging an old lady. I love the way it's like you're like. Wow, I'm, I'm thinking about this now. That's a fascinating, and this movie gave it no thought at <laughs> well, all. Well, that's the thing. This that got movie, me. the writer gave it no thought at all, which that's... is probably why he was shot. Is that <laughs> someone got so upset over As these the drop guy story was lines pumping him full of bullets? He's going, "Why didn't you go further with that de aging <laughs> serum and Black Frankenstein?" <laughs> Um, have we looked that's at that's horrible? Have we looked I don't at mean to laugh at someone's horror doom. nerds as a potential suspect? 
Yes, I think so. That's right. It was a poorly thought out screenplay, and I'm glad I killed him. <laughs> what was Forrest J. Ackerman doing at this time? <laughs> no, Forrest J. Ackerman would have been just excited that there was a, you know, full on like a Frankenstein makeup. He mm -hmm. didn't care if it was oh. quality or not. It's oh, like, and... oh no, it's a Frankenstein movie. I'm totally excited. And spoilers, it's not. Oof. Holy fuck, we're not there yet. No, Holy I was going to say, though, though, forget any of the things we said about those Hammer movies and their Frankenstein Ooh. makeup because, man, good lord. All right. So then we meet this other guy who's had his leg, both of his legs reattached, right? Um, One has been reattached and the other one? Because the other I... one has regressed to an animal state. <laughs> okay. All right, let's take it one at a time. He, he, of one thing, I love the way the camera is situated. The camera is situated on the other side of the bed, yeah. sort of at the bed level. Yeah. Um, if you had placed it anywhere else, this would have been more clear. But what I love about this is every time the guy is, Dr. Stein is showing Winifred what he's done to this guy's leg, from where that camera angle, it keeps looking like he's showing him uh, her his junk. Like, uh, look look at this, what I just did Here's here. Here's what I love about this movie. Every single camera angle choice is the wrong one. Yes. Like, the movie again is so poorly shot. Like, yeah, every, I'm going, and how much of the movie is shot in these really wide masters where you're like, <laughs> yeah. I can't see anything. The camera's so far back. And the whole yeah. scene is shot from that angle. Yeah. <laughs> it's... It seemed like Again, the director's only note was like, get out as wide as possible and then just stay there. Staggeringly incompetent. It, it really is. I can't, that's why it sh even even the happy hooker goes to Washington, I feel like she'd have better standards than to hire this guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, is that the one that had Adam West in it? Or was that... Um, I think... He's in one of the happy hooker movies. I want to say not he's Washington, in, I don't I think. I want to say it goes to Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, let me uh, let me uh, let me see. The Happy Hooker goes on 1977, a mm. classic. Uh, ooh, we have George Hamilton in it and Ray Walston. Yeah, yeah. see, they got some name people oh, to be in those terrible and things. Of course, who could forget Rip Taylor's? <laughs> oh, oh, Rip Taylor! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Do you think he threw some confetti in it? Um, I think so. Yeah, I, I hope he went holy mackerel and pulled out the fish that has holes in it. I always love that bed. Yeah, uh, it is. Uh, holy uh, mackerel! Uh, Adam West is in uh, Goes to Hollywood, and he plays a character Oof. named Lionel Lamely. Okay. Oh my God! And Richard Deacon and Phil Silvers are in this movie. Wow! Those two were allowed wow. to be in the same. They're the same guy. They look identical. <laughs> Their their comedy styles are very their different. Their comedy styles are very different, but they are both bald men with like black yep. plastic frame glasses. Yes. I was looking Richard to see did D. they play brother? I would have loved it if they played brothers. They didn't. They didn't. We're just gonna have to move past that. Um Sorry. and be happy for what we did get. This? All right. Uh <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> uh okay, so they've got the one leg transplant which he needs to keep injecting with DNA shots to make sure the leg fits the... Yeah, or stays on. <laughs> and this looks oh, like... See right there, you can see where it's falling off. We'll just fix that up with some DNA. This isn't, like, um, the worst makeup in the in the show by far. So at least it looks like, okay, this is a typical Frankenstein thing. We yeah. have... Uh, we see the seam where the extra leg, I mean, the leg's been put on. That looks pretty good. And yeah. then he says, but take a look at this shit. <laughs> and he pulls the rest of the, the covers down. Oh, my God. And he has, I need to say it, John. I need to say it for everybody. Yeah. This man has a tiger leg. <laughs> <laughs> I, this, I almost died laughing at this. Me too. <laughs> Basically, a, a fifth of this man's body has been cosplay body painted to look like tiger stripes you know we haven't worked out all the kinks of this procedure right there's still some side effects like when this Fred guy is, is just taking all this stride he goes yeah he goes well what we've seen in this study is with the kind of rna serum that we get it's all bullshit he goes apparently it also causes a regression to uh primeval state in which, humans which, which means being a tiger yeah, this it makes no sense. It's so batshit. You know how Again, man this is evolved one that I from tiger. 
I stopped and I laughed and I laughed and I and laughed. It's, it's not fur. It's just the colored no, striping it's body of a paint. tiger. Yeah, that's the thing. It's I mean, not if it was. He furry. went to a street fair and hiked up his pant leg and said, "Go to town, make me look like Tony the Tiger." <laughs> <laughs> but only on my right leg. But um, only on my my right chin. That's enough. Could you there. please? Uh, Jesus Christ! It's so th- stupid. Th- so you have one of the silliest uh, things I've ever seen in a movie. I you think. have a leg transplant that works okay, and then you have tiger leg, and Boris, the patient's like, "Yep, what are you gonna do? I'm just laying here in bed with a tiger leg." <laughs> Let me say this though Jesus. too. Is there is there a problem with the leg, or is it just that it's colored this way? Because I think I could live with that. <laughs> a tiger leg, sure. Why not? That's what I'm saying, though. But like, is it is there something else wrong with it beyond it's just now a orange and black striped leg? It just it looks like uh, a failed TV pilot for <laughs> Ultra the Multi Alien from DC. <laughs> There we go. There's the reference of the episode. I've uh, got a lightning leg. I got this tiger leg over yeah. here. I got a wood arm. I got a thing over here. Does it do anything? Oh, Lord, no. Uh, <laughs> it sheds all over the carpet. It's, it's the worst, actually. It's a real nightmare. Uh, Sheds what? Because there's no fur there. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So anyway, we're very quickly, because the movie's only 86 minutes long. Uh, well, time to perform uh, surgery and... Where are they getting these limbs that they're putting on Eddie? They don't say? <laughs> no. And they they say they're... Per- Here's the other thing, too. All right. So they're performing surgery on him. Well, there's an yeah. awful lot of electricity and sparks involved in this ele- yes. in this surgery. In fact, we don't yes. see anyone with a scalpel or stitches yes. or anything like that. We just see bright sparks and lights and stuff beeping and booping and... <clears throat> Here's something I also need to point out. This looks like um, they might have had two surgery scenes, but they've cut this edited together to one Mm -hmm. because this is the first um, operation. And at the end of it, Eddie still doesn't have new new limbs yet like i think maybe they grow back or or maybe they they put new ones on because later in the the movie they say now we're going to do the final surgery so it's a series well, right. of surgeries, right? They'll do that later. But at right. the end of this one, he's shown to still be missing the limbs. However, mm-hmm. during the editing of the sequence, there are several shots of him where you see bandaged arm outside the yes. uh, bed. And then when the surgery's over, it's not there anymore. And it's like, wow, continuity, great job. Um, and one thing I also loved is Dr. Stein is wearing these steampunk goggles. These oh, kind yeah. of big honking goggles you can see them, um, everybody if you go to the imdb for blackenstein there's a picture of him with yes. the goggles. and in this sequence they're not they don't fit well so he's spending the entire sequence just they were directed to look at all the equipment while this is going on mm-hmm. don't do anything but look at it like you're studying it and he's having to hold his goggles up constantly he's because f- they're they're sagging on his face he's putting them back up and she winifred is wearing just full-on safety goggles that you'd have in like metal shop in high school yeah yeah <laughs> it's just, sorry i only is... have one pair of cool goggles cool goggles you get the lame high school nerd uh, goggles at least you at least fit, fit. <laughs> oh, dear god uh yeah this this is terrible uh so they they do Terribly that they're like great. apparently this surgery for whatever this first surgery is supposed to be is a success according to dr stein but uh oh, yeah. there's trouble with one of the other patients. Uh, Boris, the leg transplant guy, is just flipping out in his room. Yeah. Oh, and there's great ADR here. As they rush to the room, you can see that Dr. Stein's mouth isn't really moving, but his voice is going, I warned them that he might end up with superhuman strength. <laughs> I mean, this is, <laughs> that is full on Garth Marenghi's dark place. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Just jamming ADR in into a moment to get information. And then, uh, and so then he's they, thrashing they, around, and Malcolm and so forth. Uh, uh, inject, Dr. Stein, Malcolm, they inject and Winifred him with hold something, him down. and he's calmed down. And basically, yeah, Dr. Stein is like, oh, this shit happens sometimes. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> um, also, during this scene, and I guess we've also had a little bit of it in a dinner scene or whatever. Uh, again, subtlety. Uh, we get a lot of close-ups of Malcolm looking at Winifred going, I like you. Oh, because the next scene 
is him yes. just going, I'm in love with you. <laughs> I was, yes. And I was like, well, holy shit, what? But it's not like they haven't been leading up to it, but the two characters haven't had any dial, haven't That's really spoken. That's the thing where it's like, it's... But if they're in the same room in any shot, they'll do a close-up of Malcolm looking at her appreciatively going, oh. It's true, oh. but it, but but it, but enough for him to be like, you should be with me. And, and she, and yeah. even, I, I actually really like Winifred's reaction, which is like, I... We, you know we're working on my fiance, right? Like, yeah, it is almost just like, what are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? It's almost as if this is just to set up some sort of revenge plot that will somehow affect Eddie. Mm-hmm. Well, it does. Uh- <laughs> what? Oh, come on! <laughs> because Eddie, they're testing his arm. Now he does have an arm because here they're like, he's like, do you feel this? Yeah. Yes, you're touching my middle yes, finger. Yes, at this point, but that's this is after other s- surgeries. Yes. You look at the end of that first surgery oh, yeah. scene, and he still has nothing. <laughs> He's got nothing, I tells you. Uh, <laughs> He's got nothing on me, man! So now they're going to do the final operation. But what's this? Malcolm is what's swapping. This? What's this? Um, <laughs> Malcolm is swapping out the bottle of DNA with something else. He's dumping some other chemical into the... And I love this. Again, amongst all the Kool-Aid uh, canisters, all the big glass jars of Kool-Aid, he, they have a little like serum, and it's marked in... Looks like kids' marks a lot. And it yeah. just says, Dr. Stein DNA formula or something on it. It's like, God damn, this is so stupid. Mm-hmm. But yes, he mixes some sort of chemical in, when he, and he's like looking at, like going, <laughs> "This will show him." Once again, I don't. None, none of this has made sense, and this continues to not make sense here. Well, he threw off the balance of the RNA to DNA oh, or something. Did that bastard? Now I know he knew it would go terribly wrong, and this is the effect of it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because yeah, seemingly this all goes well. And in fact, it goes well. Stein says, Eddie should be able to walk, actually, without the aid yeah. of a walker. Everything will be all right. It, literally, he's saying this like the next day. And Winifred's like, shouldn't we let him just cool a little bit longer? He's like, I don't think so. I think it was a fucking success. I think he can get up and run around now. And then they go to check on him. And what's this? He's got a full on caveman brow now. And a furry hand. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's got a furry hand, and he's got a severe caveman brow ridge. Um, And doesn't really say much. Again, it's just like, okay, doctor. I mean, I do like eventually um, this guy has no lines, thankfully. Um, he pretty much has no lines. And you would think that maybe he'd be reacting like, I'm hopeful this all worked. Or, I love you, Winifred. Maybe we can start anew once I'm out of here. There's just nothing. But and But then Stein's like, it's weird. We've run every test on him, and he's fine. His blood tests are normal. Everything's okay. I don't understand what's going on here. Anyway, better cage him up in the lab. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. All the things that we've seen of Dr. Stein's setup looks like this sort of almost vintage luxury hotel. And then this one guy that, eh, some of his test results are weird. Let's put him in a fucking dungeon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is also in this place. What? But as soon as he has they... a full on cage so down they, there. They lock him in this cage, and then as soon as they leave, he stands up in full on monster mode, including yeah. with a change into the black suit and shoes of a traditional Frankenstein monster. Black suit like the traditional monster, but the shoes they make painfully they want you to recognize these are badass pimp shoes. That's right. They are. Yeah, but it's, it's, he, he suddenly, I'm just like, I'm sorry. What about his metamorphosis gave him this outfit? That was, again, at the screenings, early screenings of this film, um, they had to stop several times because audience members would actually raise their hands with questions, such as, where did these clothes come from? Where did those shoes come from? Excuse I'm me. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Blackenstein? Excuse me, Blackenstein? <laughs> did you ever get your ice cream? Is that where you're headed now? I love the idea. I have a question for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to talk about, he's gone through an even more severe change. So it goes beyond the brow ridge. Mm-hmm. And now he has, I'm just going to say it. 
He has a fuzzy mini fridge on his head. <laughs> um, they are trying to do the built up head of the Karloff makeup, but they have taken Holy it shit. way, way further. They went so much further that this now takes the place of that previous Hammer film the, with the, with the as guy with being the, box the worst on his head? Yeah. Frankenstein's creature makeup. Yep. It is a mini fridge with brown skin paint on it and and a fro on it. Yep. Holy oh, shit. Oh, dear God. And you've got to love the performance because he is just going classic, arms stretched out fully in front of him, and a hulking, shambling walk. I don't think he had anything else in him. I mean, I think we see why he was cast, yeah. because this is spot on. <laughs> it is very much... Uh... But it's not anything like... Uh, like uh, There was no performance leading up to it, so we're not seeing any kind of dichotomy. He hasn't become a different person. He's just as emotionless as he was before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My God, it is just <laughs> I can I, I, I really I, I, I couldn't at this point. I was just like No, oh, wow. oh I know. I, I, I don't even I have no words anymore at this point when <laughs> we get to the movie where I was just like um You you, lo you looked at the screen and said they should have sent a poet. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the words. <laughs> uh, I don't I really it, I cannot believe this. Um Oh good God. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking. Even Riff Tracks has never done this. I see that many people have suggested it on their forum. They have to. It just it's begging for it. Uh, wow. And so he wanders away, and wouldn't you know it, he's immediately having flashbacks to that shitty VA orderly. So he heads right, right. to the VA hospital to settle the score. Yeah. He's he's on his way to to get some revenge. This I of course supported. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you go, man. Uh, I will say everything though, my he does after thought, this my is, first thought is was, horrible. Oh, good. But then I went, wait, there's only really the one guy for him to get revenge on, though. Well, after that, <laughs> it's just about titties. Yeah. After that, it just becomes about finding women who are already nude or about to be nude or that he can make nude. <laughs> Y'all got your titties out. Odd. <laughs> Now, for this Black one Stein. episode has given us more excellent sound bites. <laughs> They're all from you, John. That one again. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> Everybody <thought> <laughs> got your titties out. <laughs> uh, I thought that was an odd choice of catchphrase for Blackenstein. It was. It was. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. man, man. There's a turn <sighs> for us. I'm sure that people would be happy to buy. Y'all got your titties out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's a question. It's a question mark. Uh, <laughs> Blackenstein. Blackenstein. Mm, where's your head at, man? Uh, once again, I'm surprised, much like uh, in Blackula, we don't get like a Blackenstein. We don't. Yeah. This movie doesn't have the money for that. <laughs> well, here's what it does have. And I, I then figured it out. I mean, one of the reasons we spend so much time in that nightclub later and we get introduced to the singer lady oh, is because. about trying to fill the runtime. There's like 10 minutes in that nightclub. There is that, but also I think it's one of those things where it's like they either contributed money or they're friends of them. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be some sort of cross-promotional thing because all the songs in this are her and her backup band. Mm -hmm. And they're, I mean, they're decent. They're all sort of R&B soul stuff that mm -hmm. doesn't really fit a Blackenstein movie. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that's as close as we get to it being exploitation. is you kind of yeah. have these bluesy ballads. I do agree. Ballads. You said this earlier, but I, I'm really thinking about it now when we talk about the music, it, this doesn't have the fun of a black exploitation movie like a Blackula does, where you're like, oh, this no. is the black exploited. This movie is called Blackenstein, and yes, they turn a black guy into this killer hulking monster, but it's not. It doesn't fit. It doesn't have any of the classic tropes of no. black exploitation. No, which is possibly to their benefit and possibly not. I just yeah. know that as an audience member, I feel cheated yeah. if I'm watching black exploitation and it doesn't give me I did, I had, did that... have like my hands rubbing together like, oh, here we go. Black yeah, and exactly. Stan! Because the whole thing about he's one bad mother and you know, the thing, you're like, oh. We, we cool. didn't get a, a say, Jim. Yeah. Woo! We didn't get a moment like that. And where's and this I felt bad brother robbed. who has to stop him? Yes. 
I don't see that. There wasn't one. We could have really used a Fred Williamson character in this movie, you know. What we <laughs> did get is a, uh, a black police lieutenant who's a handsome young man who, who has like three the, lines the and ends character. up with the woman at the end. And you're going, what? Yeah. How did this? What? <laughs> I couldn't believe when Lieutenant Jackson was the, uh, yeah. Because you could have made Lieutenant Jackson the hero of the movie. Yeah, you that could have was... introduced him earlier. You could have had a personality and some lines. Nope. Because nope. Blackula gives us that. Um, his job Boy, made no sense. Ever. So anyway, he kills this orderly by tearing his arm off. I didn't mind that. No. Um, and then it's like, well, now that that, now that my revenge is satiated, I guess I'll just walk around and start killing random people. Yeah. Because yeah, this is where we get the the couple in bed and the woman hearing the dog, not even barking, really just whimpering outside. Right, and then and she's like making out with her husband and or boyfriend or whatever and right. it's like go check on it's like no baby it's just doing its thing whatever she's like i know that dog and it doesn't get it doesn't make those sounds unless it's upset and he's like all right i'll go check yeah Uh oh i guess he dies outside because we see he him. dies outside and makes enough noise that now she gets up by the way though, in a once fully again, translucent nightgown the terrible choices of uh shots the way we know he dies is we just see a close-up of his legs as his body hits the ground. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I guess he died. And also, What else did I, you I, need? I will also say that the copy of this I watched was so bad, I did not realize <laughs> this was a translucent nightgown. Oh, wow. It was no, that, John, it, it it's had, very It had that little fidelity to it that, I mean, it was really very much a VHS dub. You missed out, buddy. Uh, That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm all right. But I love the fact that she has There's this. There's plenty of like, shirt bouffant. ripping later that even in the horrible, I, I could understand what's happening. This bouffant wig mm -hmm. she has on, I mean, she does look like um, a stereotypical 60s she really, uh, like burlesque yeah, performer. She really stands out because of that because they do set. They, right. She, she, she has such a specific look and design as a character that you're like, what is the reasoning behind this? Like, well, what I love is when Black and Sun comes out to like strangle her. It's like a, it, it's sort of like a competition between enormous heads <laughs> because yeah. that hair of hers is really tall, mm -hmm. and then he has the mini fridge. Is that it's why he kills so her? Ridiculous. Only I can have the biggest head in this movie. <laughs> that's that's his motivation. <laughs> what if he was only like, killing people with high hair? But then like, we get mm. a something I don't think of as a classic Frankenstein monster thing, which is tearing people open and pulling their intestines out. Well, this is he's he shown to be a full-on zombie. Three to four times in this movie, he does this. We we did skip over one thing, and I need to we I need to circle back just for this. When he changes right before he breaks out to go on his killing rampage, yeah. uh, we hear an echo. We hear a flashback audio from Dr. Stein saying, yes, this uh, formula can sometimes send people back to the primeval age. Primeval age. Primeval age. Yes, that's right. And it's like all the way back to the jungle. The jungle. The jungle. <laughs> and here's the thing I love about the uh, echo is that it's not them using the sound and then doing an echo thing for it. It's literally the actor doing it himself. It's like an airplane. <laughs> it's sort of like uh, uh, coming up to the plate, make plate, blah, 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 blah. So the guy is literally saying, in the jungle, the jungle, yeah. and this the is, jungle. This is also intercut with the memory of that orderly being shitty to him. So you're getting both of these right. things echoing back and forth. So we do see this creature uh, when he's pulled some intestines out and walks off. We see him eating them. Yeah. I mean, from behind. Yeah. He's nom, clearly nom, chowing nom. down. Nom, nom, nom. nom so nom. they're indicating it's not really that he's like a Frankenstein's monster. It's like he's supposedly gone backward evolutionarily. To being a zombie, though? To being an omnivore that'll eat whatever it kills. I guess. But I don't know why it would have a big square head if it was just go if he was going and back also, on an evolutionary thing. Wouldn't you think that he's like thing. hunting wolves or something? Like, why would he eat sure. other people first? Um. But also, he has enough in him to want vengeance and has memories of yes. his human. Life. So there's a lot here that they have not figured out. Is what we're saying. No. And uh, and again, Dr. Stein was nowhere around for us to ask these pertinent questions. Then I love, it cuts from this to an awkward dinner table interaction between Malcolm 
and Winifred with no dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot of looking of him being like, mm, and her being like, uh uh-uh. uh. Um, also, it was one of the clumsier attempts to do the crossover of you see bloody intestines and then cut to someone uh, revealing a meal. Mm-hmm. Like the the food he's made. And and sometimes I'll do that in movies where it's like, oh, see, we go from something gross to raw steak. And you go, oh. In this case, it just it bounces off the wall. No one gives a shit. And yeah, and then they just sit there while Malcolm makes these weird faces at, at Winifred. <laughs> So then she goes to check on Eddie, who's in, who's back in his cage. I do love the idea that he's also got enough prescient thought in his head that he gets out of the cage. He's like, but better return before anyone notices. I better take off these sweet pimp shoes. <laughs> so he gets back, and she's, she's once again, there's a long stretch here where there's no dialogue. But she looks at him, and she's concerned. Then yeah. she walks over to a desk in the lab, and she's looking at the vial marked DNA, and she's like... <laughs> <sighs> well, somehow she figures it out, and they don't show. They don't let you know how she does. Yeah, doesn't she even taste a little bit of I it? I think she does. Yeah. Jesus Christ! This movie. Mm. She like dabs a little of this potion. Why? That's like, not the taste of DNA. <laughs> that has more grape in it than it did before. Um. So then somehow she's figured out that he tampered with it. She's yeah. kind of put the mystery together. But it doesn't really matter because <laughs> there's really no. not a big confrontation between her and Malcolm. No. Uh, there is, but it comes out of nowhere, and it's weird. Anyway, we then cut to a couple of teens in the in a car, and a yep. guy putting moves on a lady who is not into it. But then I also have questions about why she didn't question going out to the dark woods with him. And any well, of this. if the date was going that badly, and, yeah. and we get the impression that she doesn't think he's a creep, she's just not into it, and he keeps trying to flatter her, like. Your hair just looks so nice tonight. She's like, "Thank you very much." Yeah. And like, uh, "Come on, let's stick oh, around." I, this and is my like, favorite. Nah, Jeff, he goes, go "Your hair looks really nice tonight." She's like, "Oh, thanks." He goes, "Do you like having it touched?" Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that, yeah. that that's not gonna turn anyone on. I don't care what's going on. That is a weird statement, man. Hold, hold on, John. I actually did write that down. It was like, "That's pretty smooth." Are you saying I should yeah. not just try the, that? I just love the idea. If you have pretty hair, do you like when people touch it? <laughs> This is something I'll say for her. Um, she says, I'm going to find my way home. And he's like, whatever. And he drops her off. Yeah. So, so now she's alone in the woods. Yeah. She doesn't get her top ripped open, right? I don't think she does. No. Yeah, there's like two women that don't. Mm-hmm. And I was like, good for you. Yeah. Somehow in the contract, they're like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Uh, but she does get killed because oh, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Blackenstein yeah. is still out there. Yeah. Well, we get one of my favorite things in a horror movie, which is the first-person perspective of the mm-hmm. creature, and somebody being like, no, no! They put their <laughs> hands up as the creature approaches them. Uh, uh, and make no mistake, folks, the monster never speaks, but is constantly mm-hmm. making an animal growl. It's not even like every now and then do an animal growl. No, it is a constant... And once again, yeah, once again, we get the shot, the camera's on the ground as we just see her feet being dragged away, like you dragging yeah. your body, and it's just the feet scooting across the ground, and you're like, such bizarre choices of camera angles on this movie. So uh, you say. Yeah, so it drives her out. Uh, let's see. Then... Oh, yeah, so then, then they're back at the lab. Eddie's once again back in his gate. But he's getting more aggressive in the 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 because he grabs Doctor Stein and he grabs Winifred and I one of my favorite things in any movie is when a scientist in like a and a creature thing like this just starts beating the creature's arm to get it back and yeah 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 it reminds me of one of my favorite random jokes in Wayne's World when Garth has made the robot arm and it just starts <laughs> coming to life and he just pulls out a hammer and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> And he beats it for like five minutes yeah. straight. It's a good take. It's a great bit. And there's no explanation as to what he was building, why nope. that was not supposed to have. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's just the start of a scene, and then they go back to normal dialogue. I love it. And and that's where something like that works and is funny because yeah. there is no explanation. It's a bizarre, funny non sequitur. Yeah. I would not suggest making an entire horror film that is nothing but nonsensical non sequiturs. And yet, 
Well, we have watched one. <laughs> we have watched. We have this watched. Is... Congratulations, guys. You did it. Yeah, I was because I was watching this at a certain point, probably about in this section of the movie, like the a- entering the final third of it. I'm going, there is no plot in this movie, is there? It is there just is a string no. of things that happen. But nothing, because yep. there's no connective tissue, really, that leads us from one scene to the next. There's not yep. enough DNA injections in the plot of the movie, so. <laughs> so uh that was very nice save you. that one for your written review thank you yes oh yeah oh, I, I, I just savaged this thing on letterboxd uh <laughs> uh letterbox the site where everyone's a critic um well that's true that's the whole thing mm-hmm. um so yeah uh then uh, right about this time is when some co- these cops roll up for the first time, and you can yeah. tell they're detectives because they're in suits, and one of them has a fedora. Jesus. <laughs> and here's something I love too: is that they are suits, so they are detectives, mm-hmm. but they roll up in a black and white. Yep. Uh, that clearly says patrol on the back of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> detectives generally don't roll up in black and whites that say patrol. No. Oh, Don Brody is the lieutenant here. Uh, oh, the Don Brody? <laughs> and, oh my God, the, the picture, his IMDb picture is him in a suit with a fedora, not from this movie. <laughs> I think this guy played a lot of these kind of parts. He's like, uh, well, I got to give them what they want. <laughs> give me the fedora. <laughs> oh, Jeez. this guy had a long movie and TV career as well. Um he did a bunch of episodes in the 1950s Dick Tracy TV show. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. But a lot of police noir kind of things, most of which are uncredited roles. Mm. What is this? This this photo of him, though, is from the movie Detour. I know that movie. Yeah, of course you do. 1945's noir film Detour. That's a good one. Who's he playing it? Used car salesman, uncredited. So he's dressed like a detective. He's not even a detective in it. Oh, he uh, he did a lot of voices for Disney. I see that there's a video for with uh, Jiminy Cricket. Not that he did the voice of Jiminy Cricket, but no, he was he was the carnival barker in Pinocchio. Okay, well that's not uh, bad. looks like he made some. Uh, he was uh, Donald Duck's devil uh, voice in Donald's Better Self. He portrayed the, when he had an angel and a devil on his shoulders. And, he portrayed the and he old played the hag devil. for Disney Animators Motion Studies in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Didn't do the that's voice. impressive. Yeah. Oh, see, so, so watch as I turn from Don Brody into an old hag. <laughs> I'm gonna take you on a journey. <laughs> I love the idea that it's some actor going like, here's my chance to really shine in front of them Disney <laughs> animators. They don't even know it's Don Brody no more. <laughs> anyway, he has like two lines in this movie. Um, he has like two lines in this movie, but he delivers them with ultimate professional precision. <laughs> I believe his line is, hello, I'm the lieutenant from the police department. Uh, and this is Lieutenant Jackson. Who is mildly more important in this movie than I am. Mildly. Yeah. With a capital mild. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so they're here going like, oh, there's been three murders like right around this property. Uh, you guys seen anything or anyone strange? And they're like, no. I fuck. Okay. I fucking loved this scene is that they come in. They say, you know, we just got to check on the uh, what's people in the area. Have you seen anything strange? And I'm like, no. And he's like, okay, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> they both just like go. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye bye. Mm-hmm. Okay. It well, is not uh, great police work. Yeah. Lou. Cross them off the list. Uh, <laughs> we're all good. We're all good. Yep. Uh, don't know anything is what I wrote in my notes. Uh, I will take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> so no then, further questions. Then we d- we get a number of these scenes that are transitionary shots that are just uh, Eddie in full monster makeup just stalking around. Like, Jesus. by a bridge, on the streets. And my favorite part of this is the establishing shot of this club that we're about to go to. Mm-hmm. And we see the monster, and we see a woman. Then we just hear ADR, that woman screaming. I guess he killed her off screen. I guess so. <laughs> Dumped her in an alley or something. I just love the idea of they're like, eh, can we put another murder in there just through sound? <laughs> I will say, this movie gives you a body count, but it's so... 
there's nothing behind it. Mm-hmm. So it's not even like you walk away as like a, a gore enthusiast going, damn, that movie is good. Instead, no. you're just like going, were there people killed? Yeah, I guess there were. No, because it's it There is the are kind of... like two or three close ups of, of bloody intestines. I will yeah, say that. Yeah, but it's, it's, I was more baffled by the intestines than it was more like, I... what? <laughs> Why is he? Okay. Uh... I was more baffled by the intestines. And, and... for more on that, Join me tonight as I speak about then my problems. Then get ready with because we see a tight five from this club comedian in its entirety. Oh, God, again, this has to have been friend, relative, investor, <laughs> something, because this Let's see lame if I can find who this guy is. Uh, nightclub comic <laughs> does this dumb joke about a talking dog, and it goes on. You get the Here whole joke. Is. Andy C is all he's credited Andy C. as. Is the nightclub comedian here? Uh, What's important is we see the outside of the club, we see the names of the comedian and the music act yeah. on the marquee, and we keep cutting to that a few times during the scene. So they're underlining, make sure you look out for these folks when they're performing in your town. By the way, if you um, if you type in Andy C. Comedian, the only yeah. thing that comes up is his IMDb that only has this movie. It's just one giant loop around Blackenstein, basically. <laughs> Wait, but he was also known for United Nation three decades of drum and bass from 2020. Yeah, where he's, I guess he's, he must be a talking head in that documentary or something. I guess so. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he must have been like a local club club comic in Burbank or something. Well, that joke was great. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, oh, the, the, the poster for this is so weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now you're going to watch it. Yeah, I know. I know how your brain works. Well, I don't know who anyone in this is. Oh, Fabio does an interview, though. Um, that's wow. good. I want, I want to hear what Fabio Fabio is. and Andy C? Yeah. <laughs> uh, EDM was born of the... I mean, there is a part of me that kind of does want to watch it, actually, just to see this guy. Wouldn't it be great <laughs> if this documentary from 2020 has an elderly him still doing the talking dog joke? So there's if this he's talking dog. The- <laughs> Was, well, I never saw you do that before. I was like, yeah, well, you never gave me $5 to go to the store before. And the audience loses it. This is where, in the audience, they're not actually twins, mm-hmm. but they're these two guys in pimp wear, and they're sitting at the same table, and their their clothes are exactly the same. The same <laughs> shade of jacket, the same pimp hat. So I call them the twin twin pimps. I love the idea that they walked in, they're like, what? well, one oh, of us damn, should go home man. and change. I'm not changing, you change. I'm not changing. All right. Well, all right. Make sure we sit at the same table. <laughs> look, the only, the only way we can roll with this is to make it look like it was a purposeful thing, so we'll sit right next to each other and make it like a bit. Holy God. Yeah, it, it is weird and distracting when you cut to them. Like, as a, as a costume design note, don't do this, because it does make me go, what the hell is up with these guys? Yeah, but at the same time, they were a little taste... Of that black exploitation thing I was yeah. looking for. I want these. So guys. did I enjoy seeing the twin pimps laughing at this terrible joke? You want joke? to see I Blackenstein did. kill these guys? These are the people you would expect Blackenstein to kill in a black exploitation movie. No. Yeah. No, they no. have nothing to say. He's just, and then so we get the full performance of this comedian. Then he's like, "All right, ladies and gentlemen, now for who you want to see the singer tonight." And then we get a basically a whole song that she sings. Yep. And you're like, oh my god. We needed yep. to fill time, didn't we? Um, because we are just killing time in this movie. This does murders. remind me, though, of independent films where it's always yep. like you'll get some weird featured takes you out of the story kind of moment with either a performer or just someone who has a dialogue scene. You're like, what did that have to do with anything? And you realize that's someone's cousin or that's someone who's the producer's friend or that's someone who put $2,000 into the kitty to make the movie. So, yeah, someone gets some sort of cameo. And this is pointless, but some whatever. investor's girlfriend is or wife is, you know, yep. right, she sings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then, yeah, oh, she, she's fine and she sings great. It's, but it's like, what does this have to do? It's okay. And so the comedian goes outside into the alley to grab a smoke just so he can do a take when uh, Blackenstein walks by and he's like, whoa. <laughs> he, do, he does a full on mouth agape. And it's, it's more than a whoa. Because his mouth is just open, and he watches him cross frame. Yeah, and what I love about this, too, Too is uh, later when he's talking to the cops, they go, what'd you do then? He goes, I ran inside. And I'm sitting there going, no, 
I witnessed what that man did. He sat in one spot and watched the guy walk, and he never moved. So he's lying to the cops, and I have proof because I watched this movie. <laughs> uh, I also love... Uh, all right, so then Blackenstein finds this couple in the alley, known as, in the credits, couple in the alley. Mm-hmm. And um, he uh, beats up the guy. Well, the guy tries to land a couple hits on him, which I do enjoy. Yeah, sure. He tries. Yeah. Doesn't work. No. The woman has already screamed, and her blouse is already open because the guy was about to rape her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we want this guy to die yeah, anyway. I do, by the but, way, I do um, like couple in alley. How about rapist and victim in alley? I mean, exactly. Like, oh, yeah, and not- she, I mean, I know you can get frozen with fear, but while this guy is trying to lay hits on Blackenstein, she runs up against like a car that's kind of parked in the alley, and she just sort of stands like, I can't get away. Ah. And I'm like, come on, lady. Uh, basically, she's waiting for him to finish so the Blackenstein can then now attack her. Yep, which he does, and he tears her open, too, and starts yep. eating her intestines. Yes. And then when Blackenstein walks off... And Blackenstein seems specifically to be drawn to the intestines is what he is looking to eat. Well, look, man, we that's, all have our thing. That's good eating. <laughs> I'm a pork rinds man myself, <laughs> but this guy... No, uh, so as he walks off, though, one of my second favorite things in this movie is just the out of nowhere pop-up of this kid from behind a fence. Mm -hmm. It is so great because we've already seen the stand-up comedian watch Blackenstein and we get it. Mm -hmm. We, he was established before, Yeah. but suddenly we're just, there's a shot of a fence and this kid's head pops up like he's a meerkat and he (laughs) sees Blackenstein walk off and it's a similar thing where it's not just a quick, what? He, the camera stays on him while he tracks Blackenstein with his mouth open. Uh, and then he also gets interviewed by the cops. Yes. And also we get we do get this one cop who rolls in and grabs a shotgun and runs out of his car. And then it's beat, beat, Blackenstein then walks by the cruiser. I guess the implication of the cop was too late and already missed Blackenstein. I don't sure, know. Sure, let's go with that. Whatever, man. It, I just thought like, what, what? Okay. Uh, and so then we have the comedian giving a statement, which we talked about. Then, okay, this cut. All of a sudden, things have escalated greatly between Malcolm and Winifred because he is straight up trying to rape her. We just yeah. cut to that. Yeah. Whoa! I could. I was like, what? 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 I I I did kind of like that scene because I mean, <laughs> what I liked about it is you suddenly just cut to shirtless Malcolm running up the stairs. And then he's just in the bedroom. I'm like, where was the lead into this? He's now just had enough, and he's going to rape her. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so this is where our lead actress gets her top torn open, and yeah. it's like, great. I guess the contracts all worked out. I, I, I love the idea that that's the only way they can get nudity in this thing. It's always got to be a shirt or dress rip. Yeah, yeah. It can't be anything. Uh, well, I mean, what are you going to do? Throw something that's just like someone getting ready for a shower? That is titillation, my friend. This is showing the uh, 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 the consequences of, of violent sexuality. This of, movie is of, about of male toxicity. This movie's about primal urges and violence. And yeah. In the jungle. Jungle. Yeah. Jungle. Yeah. Jungle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Malcolm has lost his mind and yeah. is about to rape uh, Winifred. All of a and then Blackenstein shows up. He bursts into this room, tosses Malcolm across the room, which apparently gives Malcolm enough time to grab a piece. I don't know where this gun comes from. All of a sudden, he's it's... got a gun. Oh, God. All right, so again, we're dealing with two absolute statues mannequins non-actors the creature and malcolm malcolm gets this piece and you think he'd be like damn it i'm taking you down some kind of emotion or something but he's just deadpan just blank face and he pulls the gun and goes bang 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 and then the creature turns around is like oh did you shoot me it's just the lowest energy any kind of confrontation between a monster and a would-be monster killer i've ever seen right it's pretty bad stuff in oh, classic, it's very bad. <laughs> in classic fashion. <laughs> um, so he shoots at him. None of this does anything to him, of course. Uh, Winifred then runs to Dr. Stein, who's been just out of the picture for a long stretch. Yeah. Uh, I Do we even see what happens to Malcolm? 
I don't think so. I don't think we do. And it seems like he's sort of a major antagonist. Well, the movie just goes, and we're moving on. Because as I have um, my notes, she runs to Dr. Stein and then just cuts to Eddie out of nowhere, just crushing Bruno, the leg transplant guy, to death. Yes. And you're like, yep. oh, I number one, I had forgotten about him. I'm like, oh, right. Oh, he's dead now. Well, someone we haven't seen in even longer is the old lady, and she gets She, uh, she just gets in, instantly strangled to death. And I'm just like, yep. all right, so I don't know what the point of any of that was. And what the point of any of it? Yeah, absolutely. Then Eddie makes his way to the lab where he's coming at Winifred. Well, yeah, Dr. Stein is basically saying, get him to the lab. And Winifred kind of lures him there. And she almost calms him down. She's like, Eddie, it's me. I love you, you ice cream loving dead stone of a person. And then he kind of like goes, uh... Mm -hmm. I kind of recognize you. Yeah. And then Dr. Stein ruins it by running in. You think Dr. Stein will be like, I've got something prepared. So Dr. Stein just launches himself at the guy. <laughs> he starts working the body. <laughs> body blow, body blow, body blow. Yeah. And then he gets tossed aside and strangled or electrocuted. I couldn't tell because Blankenstein had his hands around the doctor's throat, but also sparks yeah. were shooting up everywhere. Anyway, he dies somehow. Yeah. Unclear. <laughs> Unclear. Uh, um, then it cuts to the woman in the dune buggy. <laughs> it just cuts well, okay. to the woman in the dune buggy, and she can't start the thing. The thing is, okay, so we're somewhere else, probably in the same neighborhood, uh, and we don't know this person. We haven't been introduced to this person. She has no dialogue. She is a uh, cute white lady getting in her dune buggy. And the Blackenstein decides instead of what he's done the entire film, which is tear open their shirts and then eat their intestines, he grabs her under his arm. He's like, I've gonna, I'm, I claim this woman in the name of Blackenstein, whatever. And then wanders off with her. What is this? Why? <laughs> I and don't, then it's like I think no. I'll go to this empty uh, this this because construction site. Wouldn't, wouldn't the wouldn't the movie dictate that he takes Winifred with him to wherever he's going for the final exactly? Climate? Instead, he just grabs a random woman, a random woman, um, who actually does kind of escape him, and she is the final girl ish because <clears throat> because she um, you know she doesn't die. She does die. Uh, she does die. Does she? She falls off a ladder and then somehow has her throat oh, slit. Oh, I remember her escape. I don't getting on so the ladder. She goes on the ladder, then she sees Blackenstein and startled and falls. Then this is what made no sense uh, to me. It cuts right. her on the ground okay, with a right. slashed open throat. Well, how did yeah, that happen? Right. Well, where did those shoes come from? <laughs> we don't know, John. This is a movie with You're more right. Coins. She's not the final girl. But she it's just like what her purpose is. I do love that this and uh Blackula <clears throat> or actually scream Blackula, scream. Uh, no, actually just Blackula. Ends at a construction site. Mm -hmm. It's like, I guess that's standard. Uh, the cops figure it out, and they're on their way. And boy, do they bring the canine unit. They do. The one way to fell Blackenstein. Release the hounds. Release the hounds. Um, he um, he gr grapples with dogs. Doberman, which I think are kind of an odd choice for the police, and two, are police logs trained to rip people to shreds? Yes. <laughs> but I should also say this to you. This is important. The 70s were all about Dobermans. For some unexplainable reason, they became very popular. There oh, were yeah. many movies about rabid Dobermans or Dobermans that have been trained to kill. Mm -hmm. uh, the Doberman Gang, don't forget that, with Fred Astaire, television program. Mm-hmm holy fuck or tv movie um yeah i don't know what the fuck was the dobermans they became the the ultimate devil dog in the 70s but yes yeah. these dogs tackle blackenstein and rip him to pieces and you see like dogs running out with his arm in their mouth it's just jesus christ oh and that's God. so ends the tale of blackenstein with you get a close up of him with like the blood running out of his mouth, yeah. and then yeah, then we cut then, to, we cut back to Doctor Stein's house, and Winifred being led out with his arms around her is our old friend Sergeant Jackson, who had two lines of dialogue yeah. and had no real connection to this woman, but she's grieving and she instantly clings to him in a quasi romantic way, and you're like, what? Yeah, where's this coming from, huh? Then the movie and credits ends. roll. Well, and here's. 
one more baffling decision. The credits roll reverse. They roll from the top of the yes. screen down. Yeah. It's so It's weird. just like one last thing for this movie to do in a weird way. Yeah. Even the credits they do. are They like, roll in what? reverse. Why? And that <laughs> is Blackenstein. The Black Frankenstein. The Black Frankenstein. For those who Oh, yeah. Jesus. That thing. All right. <sighs> Guys at home, I'm just, I'm going to broach it right now. I'm going to say, watch it. Mm hmm. It's awful. It's the worst thing we've I, seen. I'd say this is another one, and I think I've recommended it before. This is one, gather round and watch this one. This is one yeah. I, I, I think that's more fun in a party. I did laugh my time. ass off yeah. all by myself, but this yeah. would be a, a fun party movie. Absolutely. Because it is WTF from one to the end. It is just... Absolutely. Oh, God. Absolutely. Junk. So that's Blackenstein. Brendan, I, I, do, I, I what will say next week, is not a Frankenstein movie. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> I know, it's, it feels like it's been months since that's been the case. Next week, we are watching Peter Graves in Scream of the Wolf. Oh, my God. We are back with Dan Curtis directing with a teleplay by Richard Matheson. That's right. Yes. We're getting the, the Night Stalker team back together here. <laughs> yeah. Except for he didn't direct Night Stalker. He didn't Stalker, direct it, but, but still, still, it's another Curtis Matheson. Yes, uh, Curtis Matheson so com, uh, I, collab. I, I am hesitantly excited for this. Peter Graves is good, too. Well, you know that it has to be spooky, because the man's name is Peter Graves. <laughs> Scream of the Wolf next week. I've never even heard of this movie prior to this. I've seen it, but again, I was probably 10. Uh, it's been a long, long time. You've got... Uh, but it was... Who I pretty much only know from her game show appearances, Joanne Flug. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, Joanne Flug, also from The Night Strangler. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's Kolshak's um, uh, replacement for Gail Foster. <laughs> so I mean, she's I've certainly the, seen um, her in things, but I do... When I hear Joanne Flug, I primarily think of her on Match Game, you know? Uh, yes. Yeah. So... We'll see next week on the show how Scream of the Wolf is. Uh, a blissful hour 14 running time on that, though, too. So oh, boy. Gotta love, that is gotta love those barely 70s a TV, movie. Those 70s TV movies where they slot Well, TV in. movie, yeah. You're counting in all those commercial breaks. Yeah, exactly. So We'll see how it is. We will. Uh, we'll look forward to that, hopefully. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that is going to do it for this week's episode of Campbell and Jones Meet the Monsters. I'm John Campbell. I'm Brendan Jones. And remember, there are such things as monsters. May I have some ice cream? <laughs>